Please be seated. I welcome everyone gathered today in the name of Christ. And we welcome you wherever you are. And some are gathered, or actually many are gathered here at St. Andrews. And some of you are watching this recording from home. I'm Reverend Fraser Williamson, the minister here at St. Andrews, Port Loring. And with us today are members of the Royal Canadian Legion, Branch 415, Port Loring, and the members of the Ladies Auxiliary. And I also serve as Padre of the Legion. And um, we have with me, I will say, we have Debbie Dobbs, a member of the Legion as well, who is, uh, who is going to be our reader responder. And if you've not attended a service here in person, uh, since we've reopened, there is a note about today's service. There will be no congregational singing. The hymns will be sung by designated singers. Um, Debbie can sing if she would like, and it's Christopher and I. And, um, but you can hum along or move as the Spirit moves you. And as I said, Debbie will be our reader responder. And not only will she be reading the scripture, poems, and the minute for mission today, she is also the congregational representative, and she will respond on behalf of all of you when it comes up in the service. And thank you for Christopher Moore for the uh, wonderful music, and we give thanks to uh, Linda Albright and Norma Curry for doing the check-in and ushering. And now we light the Christ candle. You, if you could light it for me. Today, we light our Christ candle, remembering Jesus, who came to bring his divine peace and light to all people in this chaotic world. And now for our call to worship. The measure of a people's heart is this. Do we remember the sacrifices of the past? Do we work for peace in the present? Do we declare hope for the future? And so we come now before God to name as our dream God's reign of shalom, to commit ourselves to the cause of peace and to remember. Let us worship God. And we will worship God with the first hymn. And for those who are on the email list, you'll get the song sheet. And you can sing along at home. And the first hymn is 343 in Voices United. I love to tell the story. Oh, 
us pray. And I think can we pray it together, Debbie? Yes. Okay. Lord, we pray for the power to be gentle, the strength to be forgiven, the patience to be understanding, and the endurance to accept the consequences of holding to what we believe to be right. May we put our trust in the power of good to overcome evil and the power of love to overcome hatred. We pray for the ability to dream and the faith to believe in a world emancipated from violence, a new world where fear shall no longer lead people to commit injustice, nor selfishness make them bring suffering to others. Help us to devote our whole lives, our thoughts and energies to the task of making peace Praying always with the inspiration and the power to fulfill the destiny for which we know people were created. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, we're now in the service of remembrance, and I will ask you to stand for our national anthem and uh, be encouraged. Now Debbie will read the names of the ward of the uh, uh, the names of the, those that served that are associated with the Lauren Castro Church. The Honorable for Golden Valley, Wallace Holtz, RCA, Victor Wagner, RCA, James Corvus RCA, Arnold Park, Gordon Park, RCA, Leslie Driver, RCA. Harvey Driver, RCA, Melvin Smith, RCA, Cecil Driver, Honorable D, Edgar Driver, RCA, Lloyd Osborne, RCA, William Smith, RCA, Ernest Holland, RCA, Joseph Driver, RCA, Lauren Whitehead, RCA, Archie Driver, Honorable D, Gideon Driver, Honorable D, Baden Driver, RCA, Gordon Driver, RCA, Leonard Driver, RCA, Gloria Driver, BWAD, Harvey Bell, RD, Wesley McBeady, RD, Morris Murphy, RCA, Cecil Towns, P. Moore, Jack Kimberly, RCA, Clarence Rocks, RCA, Ronald Peaver, RCA, John Murphy, RCA, 
Ralph L. Weiss, RCA, Jack Pinchberger, RCA, Jack Graham, RCA, Alan Oliver, RCA, William Duncan, RCA, Elmer McBee, RCA, Lewis Town, RCA, Ernest McConnell, Melvin McConnell, Honorable P. Uh, Melville, Melville McConnell, RCA, Alfred Stevens, RCAF, Ellsworth Stevens, RCA, Peter Holtz, RCA, Lloyd McCauley, RCA, Colton Stevens, RCA, and Eugene Dobbs, RCA. The Honorable Roll for St. Andrews, for Orange, World War I. Roy Bowers, Homer Brooks, Frank Brooks, George Brooks, Albert Bruni, Edgar Cook, Guy Cook, John Curry, Alex DeLandria, E.C. DeLandria, William Forsythe, C.J. Kidd, George Labrache, Herbert Labrache, James Lampkins, Oliver Moore, Goldwyn McFadden, William McConnell, uh, Charles Sims, Frederick Sims, Reinhold Sims, William Stevens, Thomas Swalwell, Reuben Weiss, Anthony Wimmer Shaw, James Hill. The honor roll for St. Andrew's World War II, Albert Bain, Edna Bain, Gary Bain, James Bain, Leslie Bain, Roy Bowers, Alfred Brooks, Dave Brooks, Eldon Brooks, George Brooks, Herbert Brooks, John Brooks, Larry Brooks, Earl Brooks, Roland Brooks, Roy Brooks, Robert Brooks, George Brown, Gilbert Brown, James Bruni, Anthony Buchanan, Arthur Buchanan, Edward Buchanan, Thomas Buchanan, Walter Brooks, William Buchanan, Alwood Cook, Ben McCulley, Lawson Davis, John Demain, Ivan Donnelly, William Ennis, Frank Effield, Roland Fleming, Stanley Horseshoe, Melville Gatti, Clifford Gong, Norman Gong, Bannerman Gong, Edgar Hample, Harley Hample, Vernon Hample, William Hample, Victor Howes, Keith Hughes, Roni Kimberly, Herbert Lampkin, Hector Lamont, Patrick Kyle, William Kyle, James Martin, Mary Nichols, Ray Nichols, Eva Carolyn, Arthur Robertson, Herbert Robertson, Lloyd Robertson, Marshall Sawyer, Carol Skinner, Ernest Sims, Gertrude Sims, William Sinclair, Wilson Sinclair, Bernard Stevens, Leonard Stevens, Fred Stiller, Manly Sweet, Paul Timpano, Albert Thompson. Denzel Thompson, Percy Thompson, Bernard True, Donald True, Robert Tuffy, Edith Walton, Merrill Walton, Clarence Weller, Lloyd Yerke, Clarence Yerke, Clarence Horseshoe. Honor roll for St. Andrew's Korean War, Frank Brooks, and Lloyd O'Dreese. And B would like to say something.
Now Debbie will read in Flanders Tales. In Flanders Fields, the poppies glow between the roses, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders Fields.
And now if I could ask Debbie to, um, we will read um, for the Fallen by Robert Lawrence Binion, written at 1869 to 1943, and he wrote this in 1914. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. And now we will sing the royal anthem, God Save the Queen. <laughs> that awakens us to the joy of your coming. And our scripture today is actually Psalm 78. I may have actually just did a typo in our copy. Uh, do you have 78 on there, Christopher? Yes. Okay. So it's 78, 792, part 1. And Debbie and I will be reading that. I will begin. So. We will tell new generations of the wonders God has done. And I will begin with Give heed to my teaching, O my people. Turn your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will reveal the hidden meaning of things in the past. What we have heard and know, what our parents have told us, we will not hide from their grandchildren. The testimony that you gave to Jacob and the law you appointed in Israel, which you commanded them to teach their children. That the next generation might know them, children yet unborn, and in Turn and in these in turn should arise and tell their children. That they should put their trust in you and not forget your great deeds and keep all your commandments. We will tell This week, I did I rarely do. I forgot about a meeting. The meeting was on a calendar on my phone, but I still missed it because other things were on my mind. The meeting was on Wednesday morning after I'd spent most of the night watching the U.S. election results. When things were going on, when things are going on, it can be easy to forget, even when we have the appointment in our phones and calendars. When this psalm was written, people did not have the luxury of cell phones. They did not have a place to write down appointments and they did not have reminders to pop up to prevent them from forgetting something. In most cases, many were not able to read. 
This psalm is a psalm of remembrance. And this psalm, like other psalms, was sung or recited. And when the songs, the psalms were sung, people would remember them as they were repeated often. This psalm is a psalm as, of remembrance as it reminds the people of, and future generations of God's grace in God's presence throughout history. And for those of you at home, or if you want to look later, if you look in your Bible, you will notice there is a lot of reminders in this psalm. And we, part one is actually verses one to seven, and they are the only, the beginning verses of this psalm. This psalm is the second largest psalm in the Bible, and it continues on for 72 verses. This psalm is so long that it is recited in its entirety over three days of the Jewish festival of Passover. In the later verses, the hearers of the psalm hear reminders of the many marvelous things God has done. These actions of God took place even when the people turned away and forgot about God. The psalm reminded the people of the time that they had lost faith and they thought they were going to die on the shores of the Red Sea. The psalm reminds the hearers that God delivered them to safety by having the waters of the Red Sea parted. The hearers are reminded of the journey the people of Israel had from Egypt to the Promised Land. In verse 14 it says, In daytime he led them with a cloud and all night long with a fiery light. It then goes on to say that God split rocks open in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. It then goes on to share the dialogue between Moses and the people who were hungry. Even though many sinned and forgot about God, God commanded the skies to open above and open the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat. The manna in this psalm was described as the bread of angels. The psalm also makes reference to God making birds fall so that people could eat. But as the people encountered trouble again, they sinned as they forgot about God. Even though they sinned, the psalm reminded the people that God withheld anger and was graceful to the people. Later in the psalm, the people were reminded that God chose his servant David and took him from the sheepfolds, from tending the nursing ewes, and he brought him to be the shepherd of his people Jacob, of Israel, his inheritance. In this psalm, there are several reminders of God's actions and God's love. And God's grace. This psalm was written so those who hear it could not forget God's steadfast love. This psalm was a reminder to the people of Israel when they were forced into exile in Babylon. In the time leading up to the exile, many had forgotten the great things God had done. They forgot about God as they feared for their lives as the city of Jerusalem was being attacked. The psalm was also a reminder that God was present to them during that difficult time and that in time God delivered them back to the promised land. As history progressed and the politics of the Middle East had changed, people easily forgot again about God's presence and God's love and God's grace. Even when God was present in the flesh through Jesus, 
Many did not recognize him, and many forgot about the marvelous things God had done. God sent Jesus as a descendant of David to shepherd the people, but many forgot the great things God had done, and they did not recognize him. In their forgetfulness, they rejected God and Jesus. They had him tried and sentenced to death. The night before his capture and death, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal where this psalm would have been recited. Those at the table with Jesus would have remembered God's presence to the people in the wilderness. It was during that meal that Jesus took the cup and took the bread, shared it and said, each time you eat and drink of, of this bread and cup, do it in remembrance of me. At that time, the disciples did not know what he was talking about. But after Jesus was raised from the dead, it made sense. God was present to them in Jesus, and the bread and the cup was a reminder of God's presence in Jesus as God's saving power was revealed in his resurrection. When we hear this psalm in our world today, it is a reminder to us not to forget the good things that God has done. The psalm reminds us that God was with the people and delivered the people from slavery to freedom. It reminds us of God's presence with those in the wilderness on the way to the promised land. It reminds us of God's presence with the people as they were sent into exile in Babylon. It reminds us of God's presence in Jesus, the Word made flesh. It reminds us of God's presence in the Holy Spirit, which was sent to us at Pentecost. This psalm of remembrance reminds us that even though we forget about God, God is present to us through every person we meet through the Holy Spirit. On Remembrance Day, the wearing of poppies, like the reading of this psalm, reminds us of God's presence and God's deliverance in those who have sacrificed their time and in some cases their lives, so that we may experience freedom. Like the people of Israel were given freedom from slavery in Egypt. The wearing of poppies, like the psalm, is a visual reminder of God's presence to us. Without poppies, without this psalm, without the reminders of God's love and God's grace, it is easy to forget the many great things God has done. These symbols remind us that God is with us even though we may have forgotten. These symbols remind us that God saves us no matter if we're loyal or not, whether we've gone against God or not. As we wear our poppies, we are participating in an act of remembrance of God's actions and God's presence to us throughout history. Thanks be to God. Amen. And speaking of God's presence to us, our next hymn is God of Grace and God of Glory.
taking up the offering. Today we're not passing the offering plate. The, there's two plates on the desk at the back and you can leave your offerings there on the way out. And many of your offerings have already been received through PAR, which is pre-authorized remittance, or by checks and mail that are dropped off to the treasurer. And thank you for continuing to support the church during this unprecedented time. And I encourage you to continue to su support your local church and God's mission in your community and the wider world through the Mission and Service Fund. Let us take a moment now to bless all our offerings. <laughs>
Now let us pray the offering prayer. Remembering the generations who have gone before us, we have come to this place of peace to worship you, O God. Remembering the many who gave their lives so that we might be free, we have come to this hour of peace to worship you. Remembering all who have suffered loss and grief in the name of war, we have come to this service of peace to worship you. Remembering all who continue to live in the midst of violence, we have come with our gifts of peace to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Ever friends of peace. And now for mission and work to the church, um, we have St. Andrew's Council will be meeting on October 22nd at 11 a.m. And next Sunday, November 15th, uh, there will be a, a meeting of the St. Paul's Elders after church. And we're coming close to the end of the church year, which is November 22nd. It's the reign of Christ Sunday. And it's now official. We took the survey of when the official board was meeting, and, and Linda informed me that everybody's agreed on Thursday, November 26th at 7 o'clock, and that's because of space would be here at St. Andrews. And Wednesday, December 2nd is St. Paul's Elders at 10.15 a.m. And so you can speak, when is the next stewards? I'm not sure. Okay. If you want to know when stewards or Connie knows, okay, third of December at nine a.m. Okay, nine a.m. And for those of you that are not here, there is some that have not been here um, in this time of COVID. At the end of the service, I will walk out, and then everybody processes out after after Debbie and I. So um, that's just to be safe. And uh, I would go right out the door with, uh, and then do that. So that's just how it works right there. And now let us take a moment for prayer. Ever present God, we give you thanks for the reminders of your presence. We give you thanks that you've led us through the good times and some very difficult times. We give you thanks that you have guided us through our wilderness times. We give you thanks and praise for your presence in Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for your presence in every person we meet. On this Remembrance Sunday, we pray that we never forget those you have called to serve in times of conflict. We pray for those who lost their lives in these conflicts. And we pray for all those who are currently serving in the military. As we remember these conflicts, we pray for our enemies, that they too can feel your presence. As we look into the world today, we pray for the people of the United States of America. We ask for your presence as tensions rise after the declaration of the winner of the election. We pray that your presence be with the president-elect as he works to unify his country. We also pray for those who have lost hope, that your love and presence be revealed to them. We pray for those who have uh, contracted COVID-19 and we pray for those in the medical field that are working for a vaccine. We pray for those who are facing financial difficulties, that their minds be put at ease. And now we pray silently those persons or concerns we would like to declare to you.
We gather all these prayers into one in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. We have reflected and remembered God's presence and God's love in times of both peace and war. We are now called to share God's love and peace with others. And when you go sharing peace and love, May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Let's say goodbye with a smile, dear. Just for a while, dear, we must part. Don't let this party upset you. I'll not forget you. Sweet love, we will meet again. No way, no way, but I know we'll meet again some Sunday.